Well, hello everyone. It is Friday night. So it is Saturday night. I keep getting that wrong. Saturday. Habits. <laughs> Old habits die hard. You just want it one day back in time. I just want it one day back in time. <laughs> um, how are y'all doing? It's been a whole week. Oh, it's been two weeks of since we last all got together, and we're talking about some some. Some pretty serious stuff tonight, but uh, how have you guys been the last couple of weeks? Well, busy, mm -hmm. busy. Um, actually, speaking of cooking food earlier, uh, I've been making a lot of food and a lot of recipes. So, you know, prune whip, Peter Lay's prune whip, awesome stuff. Glad, mm -hmm. um, yeah. actually, actually, a better recipe was the, uh, was the, um, um, Poaching um, eggs in, in marinara sauce, homemade marinara Ooh, sauce. Ooh, interesting. So that's doing that. And then, of course, okay. um, you know, just doing the regular watching anime because exactly. that's what I get to do. Exactly. Yeah. John, how about you guys? I think I think you guys did something. On said trip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were at a um, traditional style, Japanese style onsen. Um, not in Japan. Uh, uh, in the, the U.S. of A. We, can, um, we will eventually. Come someday. on. <laughs> someday. Um, but yeah, they heading over the Japan borders is a bit difficult. So we went to a, a, a place in the area that uh, is uh, basically a, like a lodge-style building, uh, but with, with onsen-style baths in the, in the basement. And it was... Oh. Yeah, was relaxing. Boy. Yep. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> it, it really was. Highly recommend it. Um, so we're here today to talk about a little anime film called The Grave of the Fireflies, um, which people have heard about. There we go. Um, somewhat infamous anime film. Uh, certainly famous. The um, uh, spoiler warning says Royal Space Force. Oh, you're right. Money, say. Thank you. That is <clears throat> not what it should be. Um... It should be, because um, I, I fixed it in the other place, but not over here. So we will fix Aha. that by doing that, and then slightly shrinking it down, and moving it over, and then we will transition. As we say, it's not a Saturday night without something going wrong. Yeah. There we go. We're here today to talk about... <laughs> A, uh, an anime <laughs> film uh, that uh, definitely has a reputation, Grave of the Fireflies, uh, the 1988 anime film by Studio Ghibli and Isao Takahata, part of the worst double feature in human history. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when it was uh, released in theaters opposite My Neighbor Totoro, but more about that later. Um, Grave of the Fireflies, a war film, very much a war film. Um, what are your guys' experiences and sort of history with Grave of the Fireflies? Uh, I watched wow. it years um, ago. <laughs> same here. I've been watching this uh, uh, periodically, off and on for for many years. I probably came across this in the '90s, and you know, of course, the uh, first watching was always just kind of just like uh, tears and just just yep, just misery. And then, as you watch it more and more, you pick up more and more. And even now, um, before you guys went to the onsen. You know, Brent brought up some points. I was just like, "Oh, a new lens to look at this movie." So the mm -hmm. the in preparation for this week, watched it of course again, three a.m. in the morning, which I do not recommend. <laughs> uh, Gosh, and oh. uh, yeah, and um, and so it was, it was just uh, you know still heartbreaking, and it was still just you know it, it is what it is, and um, but there's a lot to a lot more to it than that, and mm -hmm. and it's you know. Why we're here, we're going to get into it exactly. Um, yeah. that's the thing. So, I watched a video a while back by um Toshio Okada, the Ota King, uh, where he did a sort of a breakdown of the film. And uh, the title of it is uh, uh, Why Grave of the Fireflies is a Hundred Times Sadder Than You Think It Is, uh, which we'll get to a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Um, but he sort of broke down all of some of the some of the things in there that I had not seen. Um, so a uh, lot like you guys, I've seen Grave of the Fireflies in the past. Um, Interestingly, as part of his dream, he asked people, um, 
have you seen Grave of the Fireflies, and do you plan to ever watch it again in the future? And, yeah. like, 80% of people said either I have never watched it and I'm never going to watch it, or I have watched it and will never watch it again um, <laughs> because of how, you know, emotionally powerful it is. And what was kind of neat was seeing Okada being like, no, 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 like, this is a film that you should you should watch. Like, it's a, it's a film that is that, that um, rewards, you know, study and analysis, and you don't be afraid of it too much. Um, which I think is, is very true. Um, it is a... Well, it's hard to set aside those, those issues, you know what exactly. I mean? It's like, when you see it the first time, like Captain Laser Eyes brings up, you hate the aunt. We talked mm. a little bit about that. <laughs> it's very hard to get through the, you know, like the onion, you get through the first layer, and you're like, ah! Right. And the second layer, you're like, yeah, I'm a little, less, you know, grudgy. Mm-hmm. And then the third and the fourth layer, I'm sure you, you mine out all of the, the great depth that there is, mm. but holy cow, that takes a lot of intestinal yeah. fortitude to this. Exactly. yeah yeah um because there's a lot here i mean this is a this is a uh, yeah. you know this this is a film um and let's let, let's get into it um i mean you know it actually does not start there and i want to i want to give this film its due um because it starts here um it starts with seta staring the audience in the eye and I think that's worth noting is that this is like directly addressing the audience. Um, and then, uh, and again, this is something that I cannot uh, uh, take claim for because it's something um, that Okada brought up um, is that um, when Sato looks over to one side uh, of this train station he's in, um, and you can just barely see it on here, there's this like ashtray to one side, uh, this sort of conical, a- or this sort of. Um, uh, buoy shaped ashtray and that is a modern ashtray that is a 1980s style ashtray um, because what's happening here is that you know, it actually fades away and you see Seta uh, we'll get back to that in a minute yeah. that, that means there's something going on here time wise um, and so we see you know him looking at himself um, as he is you know dying in a it's not, actually not a subway station I think it's a bus, bus terminal um and here's where a lot of people call this an anti-war film. Oh, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, it, I think it's the train station. Yeah. Mm. Because it's yeah. the train that Seta and, and Setsuko take at one point. Uh, they get off yeah, the yeah. station and pass through yeah. it. Because yeah. I thought the same thing. I'm like, is this a bus station? Where is mm-hmm. it? And then going through like more you know, mm-hmm. analysis-wise, yep. adding on to my memory, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I think that's the train station they were at. Okay. So he's come sort of in a circle to this where he's mm-hmm. back at the train station having arrived having left never leaving yeah exactly mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. right it's like oh crap so that that meaning kind of hit me there i'm like oh oh god mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. yeah yeah it's a vicious vicious cycle that he, mm-hmm. he is apparently and this is like when he, he comes on and, and you get that that you notice the red hue when you're looking at yeah, the spirit, yeah. mm-hmm. and that red hue kind of gives is the marker when you watch an it. indicator of death. Yeah, yeah, that it's your the point of view is of his spirit, not mm-hmm. of yep. what's happening in, in the life or what he's looking back on. Mm-hmm. So when you have that redness, and he's just kind of, you know, just staring at you, <clears throat> and he's he's looking at himself, and he does that little monologue, and you know, he t- tells you the date and you yeah. know what's happening. You know, then you realize you kind of realize, start to realize. You don't see, you don't realize this on the first watch. You realize it on mm-hmm. multiple watches. Yeah, that what he's talking about is that okay. I'm going to go through this story again. Yeah, and then it's almost as if he's forgotten, mm-hmm. and then he comes back and he goes, okay. And so we're in one of these never-ending cycles since 1945. Mm-hmm. As, as as he just keeps coming back to this mm-hmm. thing over and over again, just as if he's running on the you know a circular train route and he's yeah. off the train and there he is yeah. well he's he's restless yeah. you mm-hmm. know what i mean he's restless he is un, unfulfilled unsatisfied in this so he just repeats the story yeah. Well, yeah. and there are uh, and, and i learned something mm-hmm. uh, years ago a friend of mine in tokyo that you never for holiday cards like if you're sending like christmas mm-hmm. or hanukkah whatever cards never send a red envelope uh-huh. to someone in japan because it's a death announcement so I didn't, I didn't think of this, of the sort of red shift in Seta in this scene. Initially, I'm like, okay, it's like sepia tone, like you're looking at an old film, and it's like, but 
Steve, that you pointed that out. It's yeah. just like, yeah, it's a redshift because that redshift is a marker of death. I'm like, mm. oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, there we go. <laughs> and while we're at it, one of the things I want to point out, I'm glad you brought up color. Uh, one of the things this film did unusual, which, I th- which as far as I know, is the first time this was done in anime. Um, there are no black outlines in this film, or very, very few. Um, they used uh, dark brown for 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 uh, character outlines and character um, details. Oh, um, I know so. Which is kind of hard to do because it, it 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 makes things less crisp, but it adds sort of a sepia tone to everything. Yeah, it makes things a little softer. Yeah, um, which I think was was very smart. Interesting. Yeah, I, I had not noticed that until I I, I looked it up. Um, and so a lot of folks say, okay, this is about um, 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 sort of an anti-war film. They also say that it is sort of about man's inhumanity to man, um, except that this happens. Um, you know, he's laying there, and s- some random stranger goes by and gives Seta food. Um, at a time when food is extremely scarce. Like, this is what killed him, basically. And so there's obviously an irony in there. Yep. Um, but also just the fact that, like, you know, there is kindness in this world, right? This is not simply a world in which everyone is against these kids. Um, and I think this is very much Takahata saying, no, no, like, th- this is a movie about people, about characters with their own motivations and their own aspirations and all sorts of things going on. It's not about heroes versus villains, you know? Um, as we'll see as we get into the movie. Um, yeah. Um, well, I thought it was interesting in that scene where, where the guy gives him food and you hear yeah. the dialogue going around Sita. Yeah. And they're saying that, dude, eat something, get up. We don't want the Americans to think that we're just, you know, we, we don't want to, we think less of you and want you out of the yeah. way. Want eat, get, go. Well, well, and like there were street cleanup crews who would go and just grab all the orphans and take them somewhere, you know, and would just... Yeah. Find all these kids and just pull them all up and just take them to an orphanage, you know, which was just some big building they had to, you know, and, and they were fed and they were, you know, provided with things. But it was very much a, let's get the streets clean and get these people out of the way because it doesn't look good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not great. Which, in all honesty, in the end, that would have been a better plan for Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Get swept up, put into uh-huh. a building, fed, yeah. clothed. Yeah. That stuff. Absolutely. Um, you also get this moment, which again, you know, on rewatching, you don't realize. Um, the guy comes over, see he's dead. Put, he pulls out the tin, and he puts a finger in it and tastes it. Yeah. Yeah. He cuts his finger. Ah. Okay. So it's not. It's he's not tasting what's in it. Okay. He's trying to get the lid open. Oh. Okay. And he gotcha. cuts his finger because okay. there's a just a oh. very split moment where he grabs it and he goes. Mm-hmm. And he goes to open. He goes. Ah, oh. uh, okay, okay. I'm glad you pointed that out. Yeah, I thought it was. Tasty. Yeah, because that's why <laughs> the subsequent scene uh. it it falls it falls out mm-hmm. because yeah. he couldn't he couldn't really get it open. He's like ah, you know, yeah. throws it away. And it's broken. Thus, throw it away. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is again where you kind of get your first hint of what's going on. Uh, your your second hint of what's going on here, because the. Um, uh, Um, the tin falls open for some reason it's not showing me that there it is um, and then Setsuko appears because right. of course that is Setsuko um, and again when you're just watching this you think oh now we're going back to ghost time okay now we're going to learn more no 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 like these all tie together um, and it's also worth noting Setsuko doesn't know where Seta is initially she wakes up and she's like what's going on here and then she sees Seta and goes up to him which is again about what happened at the end um uh and the candies become real again you can buy these if you want to torture yourself um yes you can the, 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 commemor- the little box actually comes with a picture of Seta and Netsuko and Setsuko on it yep I'm like oh yep isn't that lovely? Oh, terrible candy advertising. Yes. Terrible. Um, and, then, and you're right, and they take the train away. Um, and so they're in the train alone. Alone. 
Um, yep. Again, he's... again, the red shift. Mm-hmm. Again, the red shift. You know, now we get... the whole red shift. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they start seeing the war. And this is clearly Seta starting to connect back with what happened, starting to really reminisce um, and seeing what's going on. Uh, whereupon you get this very interesting transition. Everything up to this point has been very character focused, very, you know, um, very soft, if you will. And one of the things I love that Takahata does is that the war elements are very much set in contrast to sort of the human character moments of these beautifully realized, you know, combat, uh, plane sequences. Not combat, actually, just planes yeah. flying over. And it's, it's gorgeously done. Um, and it's interesting realizing that you never see really Japanese planes up there. Yeah. It's always the American planes that are portrayed in this very glorious way. Like, look at how powerful this was. Like, yeah. this yeah. Th- this was a, you know, tremendous force to try to, uh, to, to fight against. Um, yeah. And so... Let's go well, which I mean is dri- driven home at the later point in the film when you see a fighter, not mm-hmm. a long distance, right. high altitude aircraft dropping. A fighter is just free ranging, mm-hmm. and there's there's no response <laughs> yes. from right. any Japanese force yeah. at all. This fighter's just doing its thing and flying off. Yeah, you don't even hear an aircraft gun and, anywhere. Yeah, yeah, and and for for those of you out in chat uh, in chat land, the reason why this is so important is because. In real historical context, um, Japanese were not the, the civilians were not really made aware of what and as not just Japan, but it was in Germany and everyone was losing at that point. They, the citizenry was not really on, on on a certain level. They knew that things were not good just because they could tell by the rationing and things like mm-hmm. that. But they didn't were they weren't told how bad things were. So when you see the bombers coming over as, as Brennan's depicted and telling, you know, it's just this incredible display and forceful display. It basically, and there's nothing happening to them. Yeah. You yeah. notice that there's no guns going off, mm-hmm. trying to shoot any of these things down. There's no zero airplanes coming down. And it's just basically saying that the, Japan has lost the war, but it just hasn't been told to the people yeah. yet. So they're a little bit confused mm-hmm. as to about what's going on. And then, you know, of course, the fire bombing starts because mm. they, they're not surrendering because they, you know, yeah. I think if the citizenry, you know, on, on a side note, in in real life, if the citizenry had known that they were actually losing, I think they might have said something to the government, like, mm-hmm. can we stop now? Can we just <laughs> yeah. stop now? Yeah. Um, and there's something you see, you know, multiple times in the film is that the, the citizenry is, is generally either apathetic towards the war or they're like towing the yeah. party line in a sort of, well, we gotta get this done. Like, 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 we gotta see this through, so we'll do whatever it takes. But not in a glorious way, just, okay, what's the next step? What's the next step? Um, yeah, absolutely. It's, um, well, that, that part that I had mentioned, you know, before we started where uh, Seta could have gone to authorities for help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a guy, the guy goes by on the bicycle, and he's obviously an authority figure. Um, pretty likely a constable? Mm. But if you think about this quiet corner of the country, the Kem Peitai, the secret police, would mm. show up if somebody narked you out for mm-hmm. being a defeatist. Yep. So, you know, even though the farmer sitting in the field is like, I can't give you any extra food, I can barely feed myself. Yeah. He's, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's just not saying anything about why. He's mm-hmm. not saying anything about what bad stuff is going on. Mm-hmm. He's just keeping his mouth mostly shut. Because if you say something and you openly criticize, you're yeah. going to get a knock on the door. Mm. And it's like, oh, right. okay. Well, you know, Kempe Tai or Gestapo. Mm. You know what I mean? They had a right. function for secret police to keep people yeah. quiet. And Seita is a sa- sailor's son. Yeah. You know. So he, that may have been inculcated in him. It's like, mm-hmm. son, no matter what you do, shut up and don't say anything about anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Even more eyes on him. Yeah. Um, and so uh, we get them preparing for the uh, day. <laughs> Excuse me. And it's really interesting watching this, how Seta reacts. Um, because he goes outside um, uh, once, mm-hmm. the, once the, the fire hits. Uh, and we get this, this rather long sequence. And by the way, we have, um, um, at, the, 
as soon as we move away from the ghosts, the music stops. So this is all very stark. It's just sound effects and, and him out there. And he sees all of this fire starting. And then we see a bunch of shots of a fire pail. Yep. And a mop. And a cistern of water. Yeah, sandbags for mm -hmm. civil defense. Yep. Nobody's doing anything. Right. N including Seta. He's standing <coughs> in front of, around all of this fire, and he's just frozen. And then he just... And not only is he frozen, like, he's clearly staring at this stuff. It, it, you know, his expression yeah. is not really, oh my gosh, you know what he's doing. He's kind of like, hmm. Hmm. Interesting. It, to me, when it's always been when he's doing that, is that, for me, it's always been an inward struggle within mm -hmm. him as to going, oh, crap, you know, there's firebombs coming down, things are starting to get on fire. Now, when you notice when he's actually looking at these things, the fire's not so bad, right. and he's debating whether or not mm -hmm. to fight the fire. Yep. And I think it's interesting how the pale shows up again later on. Absolutely. But, um, but he, you know, he he's looking at it, but you know, it's the first thing that he actually really does with gusto mm -hmm. and with purpose is to bury the yeah, goods. Food. Oh, yeah. The food, mm -hmm. the pickled plum, the the pickled plums, all that. Mm -hmm. like, by the way, folks, if you never had a pickled plum, find some go to an Asian mm -hmm. grocery store because they're amazing. They're wonderful. Um, Umeboshi, um, I think it is. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And um, but you know, he's he's um, when he's doing this, you know, when, when he's looking at it, and he's just indecisive, and, and and then he kind of forgets, I think, almost that he has his little sister on his back. Yeah. And then suddenly everything comes back together. You know, he's trying to hurry up and get out. And then he's stuck and trying to decide what to do. And then the fire starts to come out. And he's just like, mm -hmm. you yeah. know what? This is pointless. I got to get the heck out of here. Mm -hmm. And he, yeah. Well, it's also, it's also, even though he's obviously wearing a, a like school military styled uniform, mm -hmm. he's presumably been drilled at school yeah. to, you know, eventually join the military. Right. Right. He's still a kid. So, yeah. uh, you know, in some of that, the adults put out fires. Mm, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yep. He, that right. moment of indecision is like, he's been very responsible. He's buried the food. Mm -hmm. He's also ditched his mother. Mm -hmm. He's bit, But now yeah. he's responsible again. He has his sister. Mm -hmm. But there's fire. Adults handle fire. So he's not responsible yep. for that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it's this shifting responsibility where he's not quite an adult. Mm -hmm. But he's not quite a child. So yeah. where is he in the middle of this? What does he have to do here? You know, what does he do? Yeah. And as we pointed out, he's 14, um, which is a year prior to the age of majority in traditional Japan. You know, that crept upwards. But by this point during the war, 15-year-olds were getting drafted. Yeah. So he was close to that. And then there's one or two lines in the film where they make that point. Like, you know, you're going you're gonna to be fighting in, in this war soon. Um, uh, and you're absolutely right. There, there is this sort of middle ground in this. Also, I just got to say, I love the irony of the firebombs raining down with the alarm bell in the background, which is the alarm bell that yeah. really ring for things like fires. And it's just sitting there with just fire, fire, fire. Like, what are you going to do? Um, yeah. you know, you're, you're done. Well, the interesting thing, too, about an incendiary bombs Mm -hmm. is they are not a – it's not a passive tool. Mm. Uh, if you've ever watched any old civil defense stuff, you are literally – if there's an incendiary device that falls, you are literally to throw, like, sandbags over it mm. because what it does is it's phosphorus. Mm -hmm. So it burns. You can't throw it in water. <laughs> it won't go out. Mm -hmm. But what part and of its, its design is to go down flaming white hot – and then it explodes. Mm -hmm. It's not like a 250 pound bomb going off, so it's not like a crater that occurs in the in the area, but it blows up the phosphorus chunk and spreads little bits of phosphorus at least within a reasonable number of meters from the mm -hmm. device. So some of the old civil defense stuff is like, you know, if it falls, hits the ground, get sand on it, mm -hmm. and then get away from it. If it's still burning, and you've got, come across it and it's on fire, get away from it mm -hmm. because it will go off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. 
So the 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 importance of fire in Japan is it goes back yeah. centuries. Yeah. The big the big disasters in, in Japan are revolving around earthquakes and fire. So fire is it, simply because of the way that of construction in Japan yeah. up to you know honestly within fifty years sixty years ago, which was very much wooden construction. So anytime so fire is always in terms of for us in here in America, fire is not a mentality that we have. We don't live in these buildings, but they do. In the Edo period, they, arson was a capital offense. A capital offense. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, you can be put to death for for you know being a little firebug, mm -hmm. or just playing around, honestly, and catching things on fire because it would spread so quickly. Right. And, well, think about the usage the of stonework in. In right. feudal Japan, right, you built a castle. The majority of the footing of stone, because you could you could get that done, and then <laughs> yeah. the upper entire portions are all wood, mm -hmm. because the greatest resource right. that they could harvest was wood. Mm -hmm. and it's like, oh, right, yeah, bad for fire now, bombing. The <laughs> yeah. Now the the interesting thing about the fire bombing, why do you do the fire bombing? It's it's at this point in Japan. Uh, you know, there's different pe people will argue the point. Um, it's basically just to get people, just to get the nation to surrender at this point. This is the most destructive thing that you can do. I mean, here in America, there was even a program to use bats to release them yeah. from a bomb, from right. literally from an airplane, drop it, and the bats would, because so, they go into dark places, mm. the nooks, and they would have pyrotechnic devices attached to them, and they would just, they'd blow up the bats with the buildings. Mm. But, um, but yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a big, so it's really ingrained. So it's just really interesting to see all that into all of that yeah. just going into a 14 year old's mind and you kind of have to stop and think and you just kind of go you know this is the point where the where he's not a man but he's not a kid but he's at that point where he's just like i need someone to tell me what yeah. to do mm -hmm. and it should be pointed out this is a point in the war where there has been a lot of bombing so they're expecting yeah. traditional ordinance and traditional bombing that's not what they're seeing all of a sudden. What is this thing? And they see it's fire and like, yeah. oh, that's kind of worse. So, yeah. 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 Um, well, I mean, you think about the craters left from traditional bombing. Mm -hmm. You do get fires. I mean, yeah. but in a lot of, you know, if you figure it's fused for an impact, if it impacts like a stone bank building, mm -hmm. that impact is going to be on like the top of the building, the framework mm -hmm. of the building. And you're going to blast like, you know, a huge crater. And then you might set off right. some secondary fires, but it's mostly a blast wave and shrapnel. Mm -hmm. So you can kind of deal with that. You just kind of get out of the way. Mm -hmm. This fire bombing, yeah. you drop those incendiary charges in like this block. Mm -hmm. And once that block's on fire, it goes everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it will just everywhere. keep going. Like a bomb stops. Yeah. Incendiary <laughs> devices just set everything off. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, God. Yeah. And just think of the wildfires that we've had this year. Because, yeah. yeah. you know, 2020 is yeah. a great year. Uh, here in Australia, and how quickly they just boom, 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 boom. Yeah. but it's and and the damage that fire does. You're right, John. The the, 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 mm -hmm. the damage that fire does is so much more insidious. Yeah. In a bomb crater, and bombs, explosions, mm -hmm. concussion waves are weird things. There are some things that they'll damage, and there's some things mm -hmm. they won't. Mm -hmm. It's just how it moves and how it goes. Fire yeah. just consumes and takes everything, yeah. and then you, as Seda's going through after in the aftermath. Mm -hmm. You see the bodies of the people who not only were trying to get away, but the bodies of the people who yeah. are trying to fight the fire. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit of a reason why I'm not happy with the ant later on, because she makes a, a, a comment to mm -hmm. that effect mm -hmm. um, about him joining the, 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 you know, the efforts to fight the fires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what's interesting, too, about this scene is that everybody's running except Seda. Um, you know, everybody's reacting, everybody's doing something. And, so, and I think that is, again, sort of Takahata being very intentional here. Seda is not simply doing what other people... He's not simply reacting to the crowd, right? He, he is not just going along with that. He is fundamentally just kind of vapor-locked at the moment. He yeah. just doesn't know what to do, um, which is kind of really interesting. Um, and so what does he do? But again, he, I think that falls back to that... Right that problem that he's not adult enough to know what to do and he's not child enough to go along with what he's told right. he's stuck you're, you know you're absolutely right he's vapor locked in that moment because it's like yeah. crap where's my responsibility in this and so what does he do he establishes a pattern here he yeah. runs away 
Um, which again, you know, very human response, very understandable response, uh, very rational response. Um, and then um, we get that wonderful shot uh, where he, well, I need to go back up, um, where he goes up and uh, I've just had to kind of, kind of respond for a little bit. Uh, where do we get the, the moment? Hold on. Not there. Um, I know he goes up above. To the um, twin pines that he said? Yeah. 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 Um, we see this, and then we see that. Um, and we see people um, waiting. Oh, yeah, and then we have... So this is an important shot, an important scene. Um, everyone's hunkered down in a, in a bunker, and there's a soldier going back and forth saying, All hail the Emperor! And when I first saw that, I was like, What the hell's... Oh, he's being sarcastic. Um, this is, again, that those people get, being like, you know, Thank you, Emperor, for putting us in this situation. Well done. This is great. Um... You know, it is very much, you know, um, uh, the, the regular people making a, a commentary. There we go. And then he climbs up on the hill. You notice he glances up this hill and sees the trees, and he's like, mm. um, But, okay, this kind of makes, this is the, the best we can do. Um, um, it starts to rain, and then he climbs up, and then we get the big shot of, as you were saying, this is what fire does. Yep. It's all gone. Um, well, I think it's interesting, too, his going to that little concrete culvert, whatever mm -hmm. that, and the hillside, is a foreshadowing of seeking shelter yeah. in that yeah. hillside cave-like structure. Absolutely. Yep, so. totally. Um, uh, and so things are starting to, and it's funny how quickly, like, everyone else's reaction is, oh, okay, moving on. Uh, but people are mourning. People are, are, grieving but there's still just kind of like and then we see people just walking across the street and just okay this is just kind of what life is now um uh and so they do the responsible thing they, they go to the local elementary school um and then i love how their neighborhood friend um reacts uh when she sees seita and setsuko because she rushes over grabs Seta by the shoulders, moves him away, gives him the news that his mother, their mother's been hurt, and then, you know, you need to go see her, and then goes over to Setsuko and says, Seta will be back, let's play for a little bit, and just perfectly, like, redirects, you know, the different people there. Um, so Seta knows what's going on, Setsuko's kind of being shielded. Um, uh, and he's this, oh, horribly painful bit of foreshadowing where he enters the wrong room. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you're like, yeah. It's like, oh, this is not going to go well. And sure enough. Um, and I'll try to skip the imagery of his mother because it is gruesome. Um, but yeah, it did not go well for her. Uh, the implication being, and you can see in the bandages she was burnt. You know, she clearly did not. Yeah. yeah. And what's <clears throat> so fascinating about that to me is how um, again, he's in this house, he sees the smoke, fire has been in his head this entire time, right? Fire was the first thing to sort of hit his house. Um, and so where was his mother? Who knows? Um, but it just definitely hits hard. Yeah. Um, and you wonder, and this is, this is where Takahata is just so brilliant, he doesn't tell you what's going through Satan's mind, Right? In the hands of another director, Seta would break down and say, what am I going to do? You know, mom's going to be okay, whatever. No, no, no. He's just kind of processing and really kind of not reacting. He's just like, okay, well, this is bad. Um, I don't know what to do. I'm just going to go outside. Um, well, this, this is kind of the moment where you punt. Yes. He doesn't exactly. have any yeah. direction about what he's going to do, so he's just like, mm -hmm. huh. Okay. Yeah. Uh, mom's in hospital. Yeah. And yeah. So, and I that's, wanna, that's how we'll do this. Yeah. <laughs> oh and I want to point that out. Like he goes out to, to Setsuko, and the first thing he does is lie to her. 
Which again, yep. reasonable, understandable. Um, but he's just like, no, that's not, that's not what I, what's actually happening here. Um, and that's really interesting compared to what we know later on about Setsuko, which yeah. we'll, we'll get to. Um, and then you have this really interesting scene. And again, no heroes or villains. You know, th- this, this woman comes out, seeks them out, tries to help out. Can I help you at all? And Tina's like, no, we're just going to go and, and go to my, my aunt's house and, you know, thanks, but bye. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I would have, I don't know. But I just, of course, we wouldn't have had a movie if he did this right, right away. But, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, you know. But, uh, you, know, you, you know, your first impulse is like, she sought you out. She saw you. Mm-hmm. She grabbed you. Pulled you aside. Made you do something very important and told you some important information. Willingly took care of your little sister yep. while you had to deal with this awful thing. Mm-hmm. And then you come out. She comes out and she makes sure that you've got some level of food. She gets some at least tries to get them mm-hmm. biscuits. Yeah. And she's like, you know, and I have a feeling that if if this had been, you know, of course, real life, and and Sailor just said, do you mind if we just. For uh, and she probably would have been like, yes, come yeah, yeah. with mm-hmm. me now. Crash at my we're place. all going to a now. displacement yeah, camp yeah, somewhere right. <laughs> where we've got tents and other stuff mm-hmm. set up. And you know, just, I just you come need, with us. Mm-hmm. Right. I need a moment to to get my yeah. stuff together. Mm-hmm. So you know, and she would have done it. I, I have a feeling that character would have just been like, yep, you're mm-hmm. coming with me. Yeah. That's fine. Exactly. Um, and then, how does Seta deal with this? How, he sees Setsuko is upset. Setsuko doesn't really want to, like, acknowledge. And again, she's four, understandably. Yeah. And so what does Seta do? He walks away. Because he's 14. He doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know how to deal with his four-year-old sister's, you know, emotional yeah. state. And his reaction is to do somersaults on the, yeah. the childhood swing. And there's this... Repeatedly. Huge, repeatedly. Over and over and over. And there's this huge swell of tragic music as the film is very clearly telling you, like, this is not the best reaction to this. Like, this is tragedy here, folks. Um, You know, he's just trying to find something to do. And on the one hand, psychologically, that's smart. Yeah. Well, but also, he's just, he doesn't have the tools to cope with this because... Have you seen him cry? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Have you seen any reaction out of him that is, like, coping with the horror he sees around him? He's still functionally moving forward mm-hmm. in, in a fashion. He's not standing in the middle of the street just, you know, wide-eyed, just going, yeah. ah. But he's also not doing what most people would do when a family member mm-hmm. is that grievously injured – why? Why I need help, God? What's going on? You know, yeah. nothing. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's just like he's in, he's in complete and utter shock. Yeah, yeah, and and denial. The, the problem, denial. It might as well be from yeah, Egypt because he's in denial. <laughs> oh, um, he, <laughs> but he's in such shock that you know he's almost acting normal, and I think mm-hmm. that's why the the, the friend the the mother's friend yeah. kind of let him go mm-hmm. was that he appeared to be capable yeah like outwardly yeah, capable which... but then you know as as you pointed out that the only thing he was doing was somersaults and he's not really doing it for his little sister he's doing it for himself mm-hmm. because he's trying yeah. to somehow cope but he is in such shock through this entire time and there's no guidance there yeah. So, because there's no guidance, he's swimming through the shock through the entire freaking movie, yeah. almost. You know? yeah. And it should be pointed out, um, Takahata said one of the reasons he made the film when he did, the late 80s, is because um, Seta is not your typical soldier boy protagonist, for lack of a better term. The, the typical, you know, I'm going to step up a lip, I'm going to soldier on, I'm going to do the right thing. The typical sort of shonen protagonist, you know, I'm going to... Mm, right. Um, uh, he is kind of not self-absorbed, but he's he doesn't seem to be very martial. You know, he doesn't seem to be very um, disciplined, um, which was kind of the, the classic um, 
um, statement about the kids of the 80s, right? They've, been, they've grown up during this time. So Seita is, in a, in a way, very relatable because he is caught in this point, like you guys were saying, where there's clearly this sense of duty in his head. And I wonder at this point if that isn't sort of getting in his way, where he's like, no, I have to be the adult here. And I have to be sort of, you know, the, the, the father to, to Setsuko when he doesn't have the tools to do that. You yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and so he's just kind of doing the wrong thing there. Um, and so um, mother dies, gets burned. Um, and you see the box that he's, he's, he's uh, carrying with him. And I do, again, Takahata, you know, injecting a little humor into here where he can. Um, of the woman next to Seta just kind of looking down at the box, knowing what that is, being like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, what do I say? Um, um, and... Which we see that scene where the mother, where they, they go mm -hmm. off to cremate. Mm -hmm. And it, that scene that I wondered is, how do you know? You, I mean, you don't. You, just, you just scoop up... Mm -hmm. Um, ashes and then take that with you yeah. mm -hmm. to where? That's, you know that's I mean? essentially what he did. Um, I mean, you always, it was a mass grave. It was easier to do it. Yeah. Lack of supplies. So they did it all together. Mm -hmm. And you had to know that part of it was going to be your mother in there. Mm -hmm. So you know you, you know that for certain. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's what you have. Here's your your yeah. <clears throat> your box. And, and we have the, confirmation yeah. later in the film that that's that, her. Uh, so we, we do know it's her. And, but it's 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 her and everybody else in there. Sure. Yep. You know what I mean? So it's like that's yeah. just kind of the yeah. the part I think is weird. It's like, wow, as, as far as like cremation ceremony goes, you usually it's focused on the single yeah. person that you put in that mm -hmm. box. And here he's carrying the collective death with yeah. him. Mm -hmm. It's yes. not just his mother, it's all these people that have died as a result of this. And he's bearing the burden of his sister and the collective death death mm -hmm. with him and it's just like oh 14 yeah, yeah no tools to cope with this this is not a thing well and 14 year olds usually do and we'll get back to this unless you're shinji akari um he now sees this spirit Se seta is watching this takahara is pointing out this is an important moment right and what's going on which is fascinating seta is not watching his mother pass away He's not watching his mother get cremated. He's watching the box. And we'll get to why that might be a little bit later. Um, and then, oh, and I need to call out. So um, there's this amazing shot when they pull into the station. Um, this parallax on the train. So they had two different layers for the front and for the one side and the other side of the train and they're both moving and one's moving yeah. at a slightly different speed so you get right, that yeah. dimensionality and like oh my gosh Takahata oh gorgeous and think of the time it was a neat effect yep yeah. mm -hmm. just yeah. adds that reality to it um, and so they get off and they, they they walk over to see the house where they get in um, and what does Seta do with the box? Hides it. Puts yeah. It the hides in the garden. Great. Um, Which is in and of itself another lie. Exactly. Another yes. falsehood, if you will, um, that Seta is perpetuating on everybody around him, including himself. Yep. Yeah. And his aunt, who would like to know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and which is actually a really important point about the aunt. Um, anyway, he comes to see the aunt, and the aunt is nice. Like, rewatching the film, I was like, oh, man, at the beginning of this, she she had no issues whatsoever. Yeah. She was she, she brought stuff for them. She set out futons. Like, everything's going to be hunky-dory. And this is what made me realize um, what was kind of going on here. Um, and so he, he gives um, Setsuko the, the ring from his mother, um, and you can tell she's like, mommy doesn't need this anymore. Yeah. And he just kind of redirects and <laughs> like she's starting to get it. Um, uh, and then he goes out, he, he gets the box, brings it inside, hides it again. Um, uh, goes and gets the resources and so gets the stuff. Also, again, I just want to point out 
Oh my gosh, Takahara. Um, Seda goes by this water, and yep. you'll notice that wherever he is covered by water, it's slightly wavy. And that water is a repeated effect layered on top of him. So whoever drew Seta walking Ooh. forward had to figure out where the water was and put little wavy lines where the water was every frame as oh. he's moving forward <laughs> to make that effect work. Oh. It's nuts. Wow. <laughs> and how much did they get paid? I know. I know. Jeez. <laughs> Um, I can just imagine that discussion be like, okay, this is how we're storyboarding. This is how it's going to work. And you have to figure this all out. Go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, can you imagine that guy just being like, going, oh, <laughs> that's I'm my mind. home for the next three weeks. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's um, it. I quit. I'm going to go work on Akira. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, and so he, he comes back. With, and I'll be honest, the first time I the first time yeah. I saw this, I swore he was going to go over and wash his face, and so he's going to steal the cart. I don't yeah. know what the, what part <laughs> of my psyche made that happen, but I'm like, mm -hmm. oh no no no, don't go to the water. You go to the water, they'll steal the cart. You lose everything. I'm like, oh mm -hmm. god. Yeah. Should I mean it wouldn't surprise me, um, given this film. Yeah. Um, and so he comes home, um, reveals to his aunt that his mother's passed away, and she's like. Why didn't you tell me? Jeez. Um, um, whereupon, after making that realization, he takes a bath with his sister. Like, it's all cool. It's all fine. Um, and then we go out, we, we get the first scene with the fireflies, uh, which becomes an important theme of the film. Um, fireflies being short-lived. Um, also, I, I, okay. This may be in poor taste. Well, literally it was. Um, apparently, a couple of years ago, um, I think it was Takuma, Sh Takuma Shoten's um, Twitter account, um, they tweeted something about a um, like a character in an anime who had died, um, or a character in, in something that had died, and they tweeted out, um, why does character um, have to not live so long? It was basically the quote from Grave of the Fireflies, but swapping out the character name. And folks were like, dude. Oh. Like, poor taste. <laughs> like, come on. Like, like, not the same. And they were like, y you know what? You're right. Maybe we should not be evoking Grave of the Fireflies for, like, random anime characters. Anyway. Um, so we get them running around Fireflies. And again, this is Takahara. We don't understand what the Fireflies represent yet. But he's layering that in that fireflies are this imagery, because we all know that the, the name of the film is, um, yeah. but we start getting that. Um, and it's also notable that the fireflies first show up um, after he sort of acknowledges the death of his mother. Right, it's an ending. Um, and they have the, um, the well, first moment. Mm -hmm. the also, film. Setsuko, she's four. Mm -hmm. So her... Ability to handle delicate things mm -hmm. is very limited. Yeah. So I got the feeling I'm like, okay, she crushes the firefly. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which could could be, you know, her she's catching on to something's wrong about the mother. Mm -hmm. So there's there's she's grasping in some minor way the concept of death. Mm -hmm. But because she's four, there's like no nuanced way to to deal with delicate subjects. Mm -hmm. So she crushes it, and he's like, oh, no, 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 you, you, have, you have to be gentle. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's, he's trying to be gentle. Mm -hmm. And not, yeah. you know, mom's in the hospital. Oh, they transferred mom. Things mm -hmm. are okay. Everything's fine. Dad's on the boat. Yep. You know, everything will be fine. Mm -hmm. And it's like, it's, you know, I thought that was very interesting. As I was like, watching through it again, I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. she yeah. is small enough to deal with the black and white. Yeah, and he's trying to nuance this mm -hmm. with lies, mm -hmm. but because she can't, he doesn't want to give her the black and white. He yeah. wants her to, to just just let it dr just drop it for now. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, okay, yeah. I get, I see, I see what's going on here. And you have that line of dialogue: "Don't squeeze so hard." And I think 
boy, is that an image of, you know, don't hold on too hard to things. You know, don't, yeah. don't focus on this too much because you might lose the forest for the trees, Seta. <sighs> um, so, yeah, that's a thing. Um, that was page one of my notes. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Um, and then we get, again, sort of a, a, a notable scene where uh, the aunt is cleaning the, the burned rice out of the, the bowl and eating it. Because you don't waste food. Uh, um, and this is where she starts to get a little annoyed. Um, at Seta. Um, and we start getting the hints that things are not going to be you know, too great. And what do we see indeed? We see Seta kind of laying around with Setsuko reading manga. Or yeah. a novel or something. Um, and she comes in and it's worth noting that when she says like, Hey, what are you doing? Why aren't you, you know, why aren't you doing something with your life? He's just kind of like, what? Like I, uh -huh. it's a very sort of childish reaction. It's not, no, no, I can't do that because X, Y, Z, I yeah. have this plan. No, he's just like, I, tell me what to do. Right. It's, it's very much that. Yeah. Um, Cause arguably he has the aunt could watch sets go. Exactly. So his cousin, his cousin is not only going to school, but she, she drops in there that she's doing war work. Yep. Right. So it's like, and his cousin is older than him. Mm -hmm. But you know what I mean? It's like he could be doing something, and, and, and he's, while well, his well, sister it, it, gets the, watched, and he does nothing. In the movie, though, he does say that you know, living at home, he did have a job at some metal like works. Factory or something. Yeah, exactly. You know? so, so, so he did have a factory and he says, well, there's no factories around here. So, mm -hmm. got and, nothing. And again, it's, 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 a, it's, it's a, an excuse. Exactly. And it, again, that, that very kid thing of, you know, excuse. why aren't you studying? Well, they didn't assign me homework. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> you could. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but you could be doing other things. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, and and the aunt starts getting, you know, it, you know I remember being 14, 15 years old and my mom at summer, you know, during summer break, my mom going, uh, you know, that my mom's not going to vote itself. Mm -hmm. like, uh, put the comic book underneath the Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Um But then again, you also see that he's not responding to an adult at this point yeah. mm -hmm. beforehand he was needing to be told what to do his dad who is the authoritative figure in the family mm -hmm. is out there on the boat mm -hmm. supposedly uh, hopefully yeah, yeah, yeah on the boat fighting with the fleet and, somewhere uh, with the yeah. fleet somewhere out there you know his mom is dead and there's this woman that he doesn't know really know that well no. by the way mm -hmm. and she's kind of giving him orders and he's just like going who are you again? Mm -hmm. Not really understanding his situation, which is, um, she's giving you food. She's giving you a shelter. shelter. Mm -hmm. She's yep. giving you these things. Mm -hmm. now, I'm not saying that the aunt is this wonderful person because right. I've got my own issues with her. <laughs> but, she's yeah. got, but she's got points. I mean, exactly. You know, you know, yeah. I, you know there's things that you could be doing. Say that could if he even if he's not doing a job. What could he be doing? He could be repairing the house. He could be setting up a bomb shelter. He could be doing anything he could be tilling of you know if they have a small yard maybe he could be growing something yeah how about it's something how about the right. farmer that he walks by and yeah. asks right. for food he mm -hmm. could be going to help that old guy who makes obviously by himself who made yeah. also that old guy made that point where you know later on in the movie he says like this is a community effort yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and state is yeah. not a part of the community right. yeah um Oh, and we'll, we'll we'll get to how much how around he is. Um, so then we get we get one of the most infamous scenes in the movie. I would say the uh, the scene where the aunt doesn't give them as much rice um, yeah. as the family. Um, and and again, no heroes, no villains. Right? The aunt has her issues. Mm. Um, this is a not uncommon thing, right? Where it's like we have rations for people. We have to apportion them in certain ways. Um, 
you know, you're non-productive, and so you don't get the same rations as everyone else. I'm not saying it's fair. I'm not mm-hmm. saying it was a good yeah. idea, but this was a not uncommon perspective at the time. Um, well, he who he who works eats exactly. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. and 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 the, the part that's that is kind of like petty mm-hmm. is rather than her perspective of say that you need to get out and do something. Mm-hmm. You know, you're not going to get the good stuff because you're doing nothing. She didn't really need to apply that to Setsuko. Right. Setsuko's exactly. a little girl. Mm-hmm. And it's like, okay, so now you've gone from, let's, you know, say that you need a lesson. Mm-hmm. You're not learning anything. You're just laying around. So here. She, it's guilt by association. You know, yeah. I mean, she just applies the same sort of pettiness right. exactly. to a little girl. Mm-hmm. It's like, dude, that's just, there's reasons that you cannot like the aunt exactly. other than yes. just she's watching her family. So, yeah. Like, yeah. The, the issue that I've had the, with the on uh, um, after so many viewings, and I still have it, is basically go back to where um, Seda digs back up all the stuff from mm-hmm. the jar that he buried before the for the bombing, mm-hmm. fire bombing. Brings it back. Everybody's happy. Mm-hmm. There's good stuff in here. There's really good stuff yeah. in here. And, you know, so he portions out, and, of course, he keeps a little bit for himself for it and you know, for his little sister the candies and but you know he pretty much says here mm-hmm. you know here to to everybody mm-hmm. and eventually that runs out mm-hmm. and of course that that level of food runs out which they all enjoy because it's something that nobody else in the, in the village is getting mm-hmm. because of, because of what he his efforts so he views his efforts as hey i provided you something why are you mm-hmm. giving me guff about this right but then she checks in on him on one of the times that he's loafing around. And she goes, did you write a letter to your dad? Mm-hmm. And he goes, yeah, I did. And she goes, yeah, I haven't received it yet. One either. And up to that point, she makes little snide comments, you know, not really trying to be mean, but she goes, yeah. oh, you military kids are so spoiled. You get all these good rations. Yeah. Yeah. rations. And so it, for me, for years and, and still now, you know, when she starts getting harsh on Seda, which kind of deserves it honestly mm-hmm. but you're right the, the little sister doesn't part of me is just like going well she's realizing that she's not going to get the military rations yep yep that exactly. the father it's yeah. for whatever reason he's mm-hmm. and she probably knows and she's not going to say it just yet that he's you know he's he's gone dead yeah he's gone yeah because he's not nobody's responding and she sees Seda as a pipeline to additional rations that she mm-hmm. and her family can take advantage of, take care of. Yep. And while I do have a problem with her, you know, with the new lens that I'm kind of looking at things, mm-hmm. I realize that she's looking out for her family. Right. Because you also exactly. hear about people and her complaining about, hey, I already have these people that I need to take care of. Now i got to take care of these people. Right. Yeah. And you, you see the the a little bit of the greed and you see a little bit of almost – well, if I'm not going to get the rations, why do I have this kid around? Mm-hmm. And so she's just like, I got to make him work. I got to make him do something. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. and not in a mean way, but she's just thinking, mm-hmm. you know, I got to make him do something right. so that we can all make it through this. Right. But she does it in such a way that, you know, it's just like when he does leave, when they do leave, mm-hmm. she's shocked. She is. Yeah. She's just like, she's shocked. She's just like, y- y- you are? Mm-hmm. Really? Seriously? And she doesn't really understand what she has done, mm-hmm. and she's not equating yeah. what her needs and desires well, are with, with with Seda. In a sense, she's trying to be his mother, right? She's trying right. to see, hey, you know, you're 14, you need to do some, you know, you, you do your chores, basically. Um, and yeah. she's not factoring in the fact that he's just gone through all this horrible trauma, the fact that he's, you know, clearly not emotionally mature enough to really process that yet. But also, like, she's never had a 14-year-old son that we know of, right? Right. So, she had a daughter. Yeah. So, you know, she doesn't quite know how to react. And she she's, this is, everyone's doing their best, right? Everyone's doing what seems right at right. the time. Um, well, and arguably, too, when she makes, and it's, it's a jerk comment mm-hmm. when she says to Sato, well, they could firebomb this place at any time. Mm-hmm. And it's like, right. lady. You guys live in a podunk nowhere. Mm-hmm. You, you you conceptually, you live in this little tiny place. You don't know. You you have not been out 
to the big city or what was left of it mm. to even like conceptualize what Sate is going through. And again, it's I'm not excusing him laying around, but right, you yeah. know what you're what you're saying is like there's a lack of understanding. He's yeah. still processing as a kid. Mm -hmm. She's trying to be like, you need to do stuff. You need to do this. And it's like, mm -hmm. you know, neither one of you are on the same vibe. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you kind of right. need to apply yeah. a little bit more like, hey, Sata, why don't we sit down and have a discussion about this? Right. You know, mm -hmm. will you write a letter to your father's commanding people and tell them where you've moved so that mm – -hmm. Maybe, you know, maybe we can tap in on those luxury rations <laughs> and let's talk about this because, again, up to this point, Sage has seen all the stuff and he's not had a breakdown moment. He's not had mm -hmm. a moment where he's expressed his internal feelings about what's mm -hmm. going on. He's just kind of kept it all chill mm -hmm. and just nothing. Yeah. And it's like, mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Yep. Um, and so, you know, how does he deal with all that? Let's go to the beach. Um, uh, so, yeah, they run off. And we get that, 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 that scene, and boy, was this kind of a shocker for me, where they walk through the vegetable patches. And he's like, oh, wow, they're vegetable patches now. And you realize, oh, these are where the houses were. Like, they just right. planted vegetables everywhere. Like, oh, yeah, of course. Like, that's what you'd have to do. Make use of that land. Um, yeah. Because you have to. Um, um, and so they go to the beach and start playing around um, and have this, you know, like little time on the beach. And here's the first time you see Sensei goes back. And yeah. Sensei does not. And I distinctly remember watching this movie the first time and going, oh, there's an animation mistake. There, there's some kind of weird coloration. What is that? And I think that's exactly yeah. the reaction you're supposed to have, is something's not right, and no one's noticing it. Um, and, and Setsuko's not really saying anything yes. particularly like, ah, you know, I mean, it's, and, it's just a thing. And that's another thing that, that, that's worth bringing out. And again, no heroes and villains. You know, Setsuko's, Setsuko's clearly uncomfortable. She's scratching herself. She's doing this all throughout the film. And she never says anything about it. You know, if halfway through the film she said, hey, my back hurts, or whatever, Sato would probably go, huh, okay, let's see the doctor or something, right? She just right. does it again. She's four. Um, but that is another thing where if she just spoke up a little bit and were a little more honest and didn't just kind of soldier through, someone could have done something about it. Um, but no, she's going to do it. And, and we know she's capable of tantrums. Absolutely. You know, we know yeah. she is capable of yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, so and... if she was uncomfortable and mm -hmm. in distress, yep. we know she is fully capable of being, of like breaking down and just crying. But she doesn't. And now there's another thing that Takahata brought up that was one of those. Uh, he says, understand, Grave of the Fireflies is being told entirely from Seta's perspective. So we are seeing his his memories and versions of the aunt and Setsuko and all these events. He said he wanted to put a scene in the film where she had a tantrum, where she just kind of, you know, did what a little girl would do in the situation. And it, but he was like, but no, Sato would not. Sato would block that. Sato would not be remembering those moments. He's remembering Setsuko as a little angel he has to take care of, right? Like that's just right. his personality. Um, so the day at the beach, again, again, lying to himself exactly. and everybody else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, um, and so, and again, we, we <laughs> Takahata doesn't let us rest. So we have the dead body on the beach as well. Um, you know, reminding us that, yeah, no, even in, even in the nicest of moments, there's, there's some darkness there. Um, and I think it's so fascinating. Which is just interesting. There's, the body's just there. Yeah. yeah. There's no people around. There's no, like, oh, their boat sank. There's not people t t taking care of anything. Mm -hmm. It's just randomly a body on the beach, mm -hmm. which and either is just shock value or it's the it's the point of so many people have died now. Yeah. It's not a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not a factor. Oh, dead? Cover them up. Move on. In fact, and, and, and getting back to our themes, um, he comes over and, you know, what is his line to her? Don't look at that. 
not what is it, not whatever, just just avoid, right? Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, very understandable, but mm. um, yeah. We're going to get this rather odd sequence where he remembers a time earlier on the beach with their mother. Um, yeah. And we transition back, and again, this is kind of the unreliable narrator thing where we're all seeing his memories. Um, and we're seeing how, how great it was back in the day. Um, um, where were the area times start, start again, and they have to, to go back. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, and, then, and here we get the, the, the thing, as you were saying, with the, uh, the mother's clothes. Um, yeah. And where they, they decide to, um, to sell off uh, their mother's kimonos for food. Uh, which again, thing that happened, like a very, very rational thing. Um, yep. And uh, Setsuko has a little tantrum here, again, very understandably, um, because she gets it, right? Yeah. Like, this is where Setsuko realizes, oh, subconsciously, I'm sure, but this is where, the, wait, if they're selling off her kimonos, like, that's a final act. Um, but again, she won't actually say anything about it. And this is where Seda, I'm starting to get ver verklempt, Seda, Ghost Seda sees this, and he can't stand it. This is where he starts freaking out. Um, and he doesn't even want to hear, you know, Setsuko's cries, because he realizes, this is, you know, these are my lies, coming back to haunt me, because I haven't let Setsuko deal. So, yeah. Um... And so again, what does he do? He he redirects to happier times. Everything was great um, back in the day, and very traditional mo sakura petals, right? Sakura petals come down. Traditional Japan, <laughs> mother in a kimono. Yeah. You know, Japan. Father in his naval uniform. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Bonsai, bonsai, bonsai. It's just gosh. Um, yeah. Um, and the it, and the, the sakura petals even transition to rice. You know, traditional Japan. Um, just uh, your head being beaten down by it. Um, and and again, Seta is thrilled. Setsuko is unhappy. Seta cannot process. He doesn't understand why she's unhappy. Because he's just not paying attention. Um, this is kind of his thing. It, sadly, is not paying attention to these things. Um, and he kind of sold his mother for rice, which, again, reasonable, yeah. understandable, logical, but also, oof. Um, um, and so they have food now, um, but then we get, and here's where it gets, you know, nasty, where she doesn't even let them have their own mother's rice, um, because yeah. they're not doing things. It's like, okay, that's where you've cross the line very clearly well he uh, doesn't even the little cousin says says weren't you are you being harsh again yeah mm -hmm. aren't you being harsh again yeah mm -hmm. um yeah and you know it's a tough scene um whereupon Seda goes goes back to finally do something about their their normal life and finds out that um they have 7,000 yen in the bank um, I, I did some quick number crunching, and again, it's impossible to actually calculate how much that's worth, but it's right. in the tens of thousands of dollars, right? So twenty, thirty thousand dollars roughly is what she's maybe in modern dollars is what th they have. So significant amounts of cash, and again, in this sort of situation, it's like, okay, that will last us for a long time. That is, from a 14-year-old's perspective, infinite money, right? Um, not, of course, not. recognizing that... It, yeah. it only is infinite money in a functioning economy. Exactly. That yeah. when and, you and when you're reduced to a barter economy, the paper it, it might as well be toilet paper. Yep. If you don't have anything to trade for it, the money means nothing. Yep. Right. That and that remind that's why I kind of watched this and it reminded me of the bicycle thief. Mm. Uh, mm. The right. Do it mention and, and yeah. you know where the economy is broken down. So how much is that money really worth? Because yeah. you learn that he goes through a little over half of it in a very short yeah. time. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the economy is all out of whack. It's based mostly on a barter system. You're dealing with a 14-year-old. There's probably some adult that just went, 
Yeah, it's a thousand yen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's that's Mm -hmm. what you can see happening. And, you know, you're seeing crushing poverty and, you know, and the bicycle thief, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's a father who basically takes his own laundry, basically, and pawns it so he can get his bicycle back, so he can do this job to get money to feed his family because mm-hmm. it's all crushing debt. And he's putting on a jovial face for his son in the movie, mm-hmm. and it, it just reminds me a lot of Seda. And yep. you know, it all ends about as well as it does for Seda, mm-hmm. minus yeah. the death. Oh, I, you know, geez. it's it's just it's uh-huh. just this whole thing of just like. Here's the reality, and it's what Seda is seeing, but you, there's parts of it that aren't in there. Like, how did the money get spent? But you see him bartering mm-hmm. for items with, yep. with yeah. the farmer and stuff like that, and you're just like, okay, things are really not good when you're sitting there and you're going, how can I buy? He says, he gets his money, he says, can I buy some food? Yeah. And what does he get? He doesn't get that much. hmm yeah. Think about what he gets. He gets all these other items, like this really nice, like, crock, a, mm-hmm. a, 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 port, a, a portable, like, oven. Mm-hmm. Oven stove. Yeah. Stove. Yeah. Um, a, an umbrella of sorts. Uh, you know, just, you know, the, the iconic umbrella. Mm-hmm. And all these things. But you see, he gets, so he has these nice things, but then the food is nothing. Yeah. It's, it's 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 just not you know he's not it, there's no prioritizing so you have to mm-hmm. you know really wonder where that yeah. that money went yep exactly um, it's it's not good um, dear, um, whereupon we get yeah uh, let's go cry um, so yeah my never talked to what was happening it was being made at the same time. And it's interesting how there are several sequences in this that are almost like shot for shot copies. Because this is very much the, the Satsuki cry from I Might Never, Might Never Totoro, when she just kind of loses it near okay. the end of the film. Um, and so I wonder if they weren't kind of like comparing notes of kind of doing the same kind of thing of we're right. going to, because it's very unusual in any sort of animated work to have a character full face in a shot just start to cry. And it's, it has this like very strong impact in the film, in, in both of the films. Um, and I just, you know, kind of, I always have to respect them for doing that because it's it's a tough thing to see. Um, and here's where you see that at the end. You get to wonder how idealized this is, where there's the little shards of candy in there and then the, the big lump of candy. Yeah. And so instead of taking the big lump of candy, she takes the little bits and eats that to kind of save the big candy for later. Um, which again is, is very wise, but who knows? Um, yeah. And so they make candy water, which I don't know, looked to me a lot like sake. And I wonder if they weren't kind of, say- you know, again, traditional Japanese kind of thing. You know, this kind of right. had that feel of here, here's this, uh, this drink, um, which he then uh, gets to drink and enjoy. Um, and he leaves the dishes for his aunt to take care of. Well, speaking of sake, mm-hmm. during New Year's festival, mm. uh, shrines present ame sake, which is sweet sake, yeah. as a yeah. as a consecrated drink. Okay. So, now that you say that, it mm. makes me kind of wonder if this is, if you know what I mean, if there's a deeper, sort of quasi religious context yeah. to there. It's like, oh, here is this sweetened drink that you drink for the new year, that you drink at consecration, that you mm. probably drink at funerals. Yeah, probably. I don't, I don't know for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would not surprise me at all. Um, yeah, and the dishes thing, that would... Mm-hmm. Sita just... Uh, he he yeah. makes choices. He, he does. makes choices. He does. <laughs> um, um, so Jake said to go out and get the fireflies again. Um, and here's where I had one of my holy crud moments. Um, let me see if I can do this. Um, do, 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 do. Um, there's that. Yeah. Um, so when he's running, I'll see if I can pull up the subtitles for this. Um, because he's out with Setsuko, kind of helping her. They hear the bombs and we transition to Ghost Seta. 
running away. And then in this sequence, he runs up, and as he's doing this, they're not going to share the subtitles, but as he's running up, the line of dialogue we hear is the aunt saying, basically, are you sure you couldn't be out there doing something like, you know, helping out with the community? And that's the point at which he sees them at the cave. Yeah. And he's connecting, oh, I wasn't doing anything. And that's what drove me there to running away and to that place where we know things happen. Um, so this is his mind connecting all of the, the threads as to how his actions have, have had consequences. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, plot progresses. He starts realizing it's time for him to go. The, the aunt is basically, you know, do something. Um, and so he moves out. They move out. And here's that, that scene, Steve, like you say, where, where they leave and, she, and the aunt's kind of like, oh, okay, I guess. You know? Hello. Hello. Sorry, got to meet you here. Um, one second. Uh, here we go. Um, sorry about that. One moment. Oh. One moment. Slight so technical, technical issue. Doo -doo -doo -doo. There we go. Um, the ghost of the machine. <laughs> ghost of the machine. There we go. Ghost of the shell. Yeah. Um, so they leave. Um, much to her surprise. Uh, and then we get these scenes you guys start talking about, where they are, you know, basically bartering for food for what they can. And there's just. And fourteen-year-olds don't have good barter skills. I am no. sorry. <laughs> no. Yeah. Um, and so we get some straw, he gets some stuff, and they start, you know, living their life um, out in here. Um, uh, let's see here. Um, do, 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 do. Um, also should be noted, um, let's see if we can find it in here. When they come, yeah, um, he puts his mother's ashes, like, in a little alcove. Doesn't bury them, just sort of puts them to one side. Dude, um, yeah. I would presume he would know that you're supposed to take them to a shrine to be interred. He he tells her, you know, but, where is she? She's in a graveyard. Like he knows what to do there. Yeah, I mean, but he just, and I mean, you're, he's holding on to some sense of normalcy right. in a odd, childlike way. Their mother is with them. Yeah, uh, you know. Mm. Yeah, exactly. No, absolutely. Um, and so we get their life, um, we get fireflies again, um, we get the a kamikaze flying over. Yeah. It looks like a firefly. It's like, oh, there's a sign, you know, there's a reference for you. Um, and so they bring in the fireflies. You know what, this is, this, please. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say, this is the first time that I noticed watching, mm. and I don't know how it escaped me, fireflies on the inside of the net. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't like I you know saw the you know the grave they make and all that stuff, but but the I didn't notice that they were on the inside, and I yeah. was just like, well, "That's really creepy." <laughs> we're voting, and I'm like going, "Oh, oh no, no, I don't like that at all." I know what's going to happen, but I still don't like this yeah. at all. Um, and then, as we talked about before, the brilliance get, of this shot, that framing, mm -hmm, that yeah. framing oh. is very much like the framing of a. The photo that you put up at a funeral with the two little black ribbons on the side of somebody who's passed away. So again, where Takahata is telling us what's happening here and what is going to happen in this movie, which we already kind of know, right? We already have an, an, an inkling. Uh, we even get the, the the firefly on the doll, which is like, okay, yeah, yeah. foreboding. Um, and we um, when was the reveal? When did uh, Setsuko say that the aunt told her? A little later on. What happened? Yeah, a little, a little later, later on. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. When he gets caught. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so we have all these fireflies going all over the place. And he imagines this naval review. Uh, oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Which would have been 39 ish based on the, the years. Yeah. Right before Setsuko. 
So this is before Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, this is, hey, we have the greatest military in the world. Everything's going to be great. Um, and he does this very interesting thing. He quotes a military march. Yep. And it's like, dude. All the way with a fist pumping. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you get childish. Oh. That, that, oh, you know, rah, rah, sis, boom, bah, being a soldier is great. It's like, what have you been watching? What have you been living for the past, who, who knows how many months? It's just not connecting. Yeah. He's just not, not connecting. Um, well, it's interesting is that, it, I mean, that disconnect is the experience on land. The fleet is this glorious, yeah. it, when I was a kid, it was this thing that was untouchable. Mm -hmm. So on land, we're suffering, but, you know, dad's out at sea and the fleet's doing its thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's like. And the fleet is, is on review under fireworks. You hear the fireflies with the fireworks. So I'm on review. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's like, ah, oh, boy. Yeah. And he would have been nine at this point. Right, it's so very impressionable, very much, very overawed by it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was the thing. Um, and then, oh, uh, the scene. Um, they both lay down. And again, this is where you're like, oh, this is what's going on. Um, he rolls over to her, puts a hand on her. She's She pushes him away because she's uncomfortable with somebody putting a hand on her back because of the, you know, the, the that. Um, and then he kind of rolls away from her. Like, oh, okay, fine. It's like, no, that's not what's going on here. But they're just, they're just talking past each other. They're just not seeing it. Yeah. Um, yeah, and, you know, there you go. Um, and it's, yeah, so here's the scene. So he goes out, she's burying the fireflies, um, who don't live very long, and they kind of pulled them all into a net and made them all die. I, you know, kind of yeah. killed them. Um, and so she, uh, she she buries them, and this is where Seda gets his first breakdown because he gets caught, and he realizes, oh, all this yeah. protecting I've been doing, all this is just no. It, it, she knew, um, and it's worth noting, yeah, that Setsuko like she's sad, but she's dealing with it, right? Like she's not throwing a tantrum; she's just kind of quietly processing it. Um. And we see the box. Yeah. And the box is glowing. Hi highlighted in red. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the mother's ghost is there. And we get this very interesting thing that happens. Because Takahata pans down to the, to the box. And then... And two fireflies. Mm, and then... Pans off to the left. Into darkness. Yeah. Into nothingness. Um, which either is simply that, you know, the two fireflies going off into darkness, or is, you know, is the ghost watching this? Like, does the ghost get this? Is, is, are the ghosts watching from a corner, just we're not seeing it? I don't know. Um, but again, I, I don't think that's a very subtle image there, unfortunately. Um, boys come in, they see what's going on here, they're kind of commenting on, on the situation. They see a ghost and run off. Um, yeah. And... I'm unclear on this scene because what's interesting about this scene is that Seto would not have known this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and this comes across like it would be a scene from later on after both of them have passed away and somebody stumbled across their, their stuff. But it can't be that because the candy tin is still there. So I'm still unsure what this scene is kind of doing in the film, unless it's Seda imagining how other people see him. And he's imagining what the, how these boys must react to seeing this odd little camp set up. I don't know. Well, unless the, that he is the ghost that we've mm -hmm. just seen go off yeah. into the dark corner. Right. Yeah. But then that's, you know what I mean? You've got this interesting juxtaposition with that. So yeah, it's... it's... Yeah, not sure. Um, so now they go back and try to barter. The farmer is like, no, like that's we're past that now, sadly. Um, yeah. And what does Zeta do? Steals. Like literally, the next yep. thing he does is start stealing vegetables. Um, poor choices. Poor choices. Poor choices. Again, understandable choices, desperate choices. 
um, but not good. And here's where we meet, we meet the, uh, the apparent soldier, somebody. We're not sure who, we're not sure what, but they're worried. I'm wondering again, we see Seta talk to a constable mm -hmm. who for some reason is dressed like an admiral. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know what uniforms are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's why I think that dude is a member of the Kempei Tai. Yeah, must be. That he's a member of the military secret police, mm -hmm. yeah. and he's on the walk around to make sure that people are not doing anything. They're not being anti-patriotic. They're doing well, their part from the war, and he gives them good stern look. Yeah. Like, oh. Well, even Setsuko is like, oh, crap. Yeah. Like, clearly she yeah. knows this, this guy's bad news. Yeah. Um, so absolutely, there's, there's, that's going on there. Um, but you notice how, but you notice how Seda also, when the guy, the, the, the constable, not the guy on the bike, the constable mm -hmm. who's dressed up in kind of the uniform mm -hmm. <clears throat> is protective of Seda. Yeah. And the yeah. guy, you know, who catches him stealing, beats the crap out of him, yeah. basically. And the guy would puts his hand on the, on the sword and he just goes, don't you think the kid's had enough? I, he, he's, he's done now. We're, we're, we're okay. We're, he's, yeah. he's, you punished him. It's done. Mm -hmm. And then he offers the kid, it offers Seda yeah. water. Yeah. Yeah. And you can tell yeah. that he's, again, here's another adult who kind of sees the situation, mm -hmm. is ready to go, you need some help? Mm -hmm. Why don't you come in and yeah. have a drink of water? Talk to me. Mm -hmm. And, you know, let me know what's going on. And, you know, maybe maybe this is the time where we grab both of you and take you to that large building where the orphans are, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. You know, but he's clearly seeing something that's not right here. And this is where you start also to see Seda himself deteriorating. Yeah. Physically. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's just, you know, going down. And um, so, you know, but he, re but again, so, you know, as we're all pointing out, what does Seda do? No, thank you. I got it. Yep. Clearly you don't, but he yeah. thinks he does. Mm -hmm. Yep. And and there's another opportunity gone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and he breaks down and cries again. Again. Right. And again, why? Because Setsuko knows what's going on. He got caught again. Right? Yeah. Yeah. She tells him. Auntie told me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's and and he just he's just like, okay, so everything I've been doing right now, I just got my butt handed to me. Yep. Oh, and we're living in a cave in dirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and, you uh -huh. know, something's going on. You know, and so, you know, at this point, I probably would have, by itself, I probably would have been like, screw it, turned around and gone back to the guy and just get, yeah, I'll take that water, please. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, here's my, by the way, here's my little sister who's dying. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. She's sick. I'm losing weight rapidly. We're still wearing got, rags, she's basically. Got, so please, God, help us. And, and, and she's got, and she knows that she's sick, yeah. by the way. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's talking about how, you know, you know she's got to go, but she's talking about diarrhea. She's not yeah. talking about just going around the alley doing number one. She's yeah. like, I can't stop. Yeah. Her stomach hurts. I can't stop. And that's when you. And he makes the wrong choice. Mm. Can you hold it till we get back? Yep. No. Yeah. <laughs> Find the adult. Even if it's the guy who beat the crap out of you. Yeah, exactly. Sure what is, one here. look at the little girl would have said, oh, okay, here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so how does he react to this? He starts stealing <laughs> stuff. Uh, yeah. um, and so he runs off and starts um, doing that. And here's the thing that I didn't notice. Well, I'll get, I'll get to it later. Um, uh, and so he, he brings food, and now he's really caring for Setsuko. Um, and he's doing what he can, and we all know it's too late. Like, it's it's clear what's going on here. Um, yeah. And what's fascinating... Well, do you notice when he's stealing, he's yeah. like, yes, gleeful. Yes. Absolutely. It's like he's... I was, Yep. He goes from not knowing how to deal with firebombing and mm -hmm. horrible things to what could be nothing less than reckless disregard. He yeah. just doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Running yeah. through, stealing stuff, having a high old time. He could be killed at any minute and leave Setsuko behind. Mm -hmm. But he is so unperfect shot. He is unfreaking hinged yeah. at this point. Mm -hmm. Nothing matters. The moral code's out the door, and it's just gleeful going for it yep. like 
Dude, you lost your damn mind. Mm -hmm. Well, well, yes, indeed. Um, and he comes home, right, to Setsuko. And like, everything's great, you know? And we can see her reaction to that. Yeah. You know, she's like, uh-huh, sure. Um, um, and again, here's where things start to, to get serious. Um, where she just starts basically shutting down. He, he finally goes to the, to the doctor. Um, and like we were saying before, it's malnutrition. That's all it is. It's yeah. all they have to, to deal with. Um, and his reaction is, well, where's the shot? Yeah. Just fix it. Yeah. You're, you're the adult. Fix it. Mm -hmm. Where's the shot? Yeah. No, no, no. And, it, and the doctor just kind of looks at him and goes, no, you fix it. You, all you have to do is feed her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? And it, yeah. it just doesn't connect. Yeah, the days before Child Protective Services where the doctor said, wait in the waiting room and I'll right. get you that shot. Mm -hmm. Hi. Can you take these kids to some place yeah. to have them not starve to death? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's war. And he does and, it. And he does that a loud yeah. burst of where am I supposed to get food? Right? Which, again, very reasonable question at this point. Right? Like, food is not easy to yeah. get. Um, uh, you know, it's, it's really difficult. Um, um, you know, whereupon he, he gets the, the shaved ice, uh, to give to her. Um, uh, and we progress on, um, and so here's where he goes back to finally get the rest of the money, which is now 3,000 yen. Yeah. As we were saying before, a lot of it's gone. I should also point out his last line to her here if I recall correctly, is I'll never leave you again. And the next shot is him off of the bank. Leaving her. Leaving her. It's like, mm, mm. Um, whereupon he finds the war is over. Um, and it's, it's, it's over. And I, again, I love the way Takahata d does this scene because it is so mundane. It is literally a desk at a bank, there's nothing dramatic about this moment. There's nothing, you know, the camera isn't poised anything. We're not even quite on center. It's just there are people over on this side doing things. It's this very everyday moment where he, where the world falls in on him and he realizes we lost and my dad's dead. Which they, when you fleet review and they're talking about this, or what about the fleet? It's like they mentioned that his father served on the Maya, which was a Takao class uh, heavy cruiser. Okay. Um, in 1944, it was part of a task force sent to Leyte in the Philippines mm. to oh, okay. shore up the Japanese uh, position in the Philippines. Mm. And it got sunk. Mm. Complement of 1105 and on board. They were rescued by. Here's the part that super sucks. The Musashi. Musashi oh. was the sister battleship to the Yamato. Yeah. The right. Musashi was sunk 24 hours later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So out of the 1,105 men that went down with the Maya, mm -hmm. they got rescued by the Musashi. 480 of them mm -hmm. perished. So there was a 50-50 chance... That Seta's dad survived, mm. but he would have probably been probably caught been. in the Philippines, interred in the Philippines for the next year or two mm. if he had survived. Mm. So time frame wise, there was no reasonable means for his dad to even have had a chance to get back before the inevitable occurred. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like, mm. oh, crap, an A. Yeah. Yeah. Um... And here's where, and, and again, you know, you, you look at through, through all these lenses, you know, Seta has been holding on to this hope that, well, at least my dad's still alive, everything's fine there, so if dad comes home, it'll all be good. You know, and again, what have you been living through for the past, you know, umpteen months that you didn't put two and two together, because you're 14, um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's rough. Um, um, until he gets home, and we're not going to spend a lot of time on this, uh, because Hetsuko passes away. Um, and, yeah. um, yeah. uh, uh, I'm for Yeah, no, totally. Um, 
Uh, and of course, her, her last words are "thank you," um, which is yeah. Um, and so she passes, and I'll see if I can get the shot. Um, and from this point on, Seta does not have a single emotional reaction. Yeah, Seta's gone. He has he's lost it all. Uh, and we get the again Takahata. I'm I'm gonna say it. I love the man. I love the film. Not subtle, the scene with the other family coming home and saying, oh, it's wonderful, oh, it's glad to be back, nothing's changed, you know, and pan down to them. Um, Which the interesting part, if you notice, mm -hmm. at first I thought this was literally, oh, these are people who are well off that have, mm -hmm. that have come back to their vacation house over this nice pond. It's, mm -hmm. you know, they're returning. Look at the way they're dressed. Yeah. Oh, they're it's... dressed yeah. in like 1950s kind of mm -hmm. styled, like like poodle skirt kind of that shot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like a 1950s style dress. Mm -hmm. That's not, that's not then. Mm -hmm. And it's just like I was looking at that. And I'm like, I didn't. It didn't mm -hmm. process at first. I'm like, nobody in any of the rest of this dressed like that. They had some right. form of kimono or they had some form of like sort of general sort of bland clothing. Mm -hmm. This is not a month after the war. Mm -hmm. This is some point we're seeing where it's like mm -hmm. they're forward in time where this this clothing, this vibrant color is a thing you could have then. And, and again, like, this is all through Seda's mind. He had no yeah. way of seeing this. So Unless it was his ghost. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, totally. Um uh, and so and then we get the, we get this 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 very important moment where Takahata's laying out kind of his his point here, there are their mother's ashes sitting on a shelf. Nothing's been done with it. Also, the food's all been eaten, including the melon that he brought for Setsuko. He ate her food. Again, reasonable, rational, logical, but there's something about that that makes the audience member go, ooh. Uh. Um... And here's well, that's sort of like going to a going to a grave and eating the grave goods. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, it's like you're you're consuming food for the dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that, what I was gonna say is that that's always struck me as um, eating to feed a never empty hole. Yeah. There's <clears throat> you, you know there's people who who eat mm -hmm. to try to fill a void of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I that you know he was trying probably trying to do that because what's the, what is he doing as he's as as you know Sesca is, is being burned mm -hmm. you know into ashes he's, he's eating yeah yeah and and but the the expression well, on his face is and, and you notice you know, even before that when he goes out um um uh, stealing he's filling his mouth right he's eating for himself um, and obviously brings stuff back for Setsuko. But this is well, but that one scene you showed where he mm -hmm. popped open the rice container, yeah. he's just shoveling it in as fast as he can and then running through. Yeah. Like, oh. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that made me literally write down an expletive. Uh, we get all these scenes of Setsuko running around doing her things. Where's oh, yeah. Seta? For all of him saying, I'm never going to be, he was never around. She was always having to, you know, fend for herself and play by herself because Seta was always out doing other stuff. And that's, yeah. And that was, and that's, by the way, that is the scene that gets me each and every time I watch mm -hmm. this freaking movie. Yep. The part where she makes the mud balls on a stick mm -hmm. and she looks at it and she opens her mouth and you're like no. don't do that yeah well how about where she's using a branch to try and sweep the cave yeah mm -hmm. like and you're trying just, to you're trying to home care no. the cave like and just oh, being gosh. a child where yeah. she's just sees something is distracted and then she's running around with the blanket around her head being cute and everything yeah. and you know you're just like yeah. just like oh Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and again, and this is why Takahata says this is this is not an anti-war film. This is, in a real sense, a celebration of these characters' lives. Like I am trying to show you that in the midst of all of this tragedy, they did the best they could for themselves. 
and they had happiness. They had, you know, they had happy moments in all of this, um, despite what happened. Um, and yeah, we're going to fast forward past a lot of this, but yeah, see, she's, she's alone. Um, and so yeah, Seda's just checked out. Seda is gone. He has lost his humanity. It's over. Um, because he, you know, kind of killed his sister. Um, and again, I, yeah. I, my gosh, Takahata, the framing of all this, you know, I just love how he provides in this moment, you know, these little images down here of the fire and Seta, and then the other stuff around to kind of draw your eye in and focus you on these things. Very simple, very effective, but providing that sense of distance, right? Seta is yeah. away from us now. Um, and then the fireflies show up, symbolism. Um, he's well, eating. I think it's also interesting when he's cremating his sister, mm -hmm. if you wrap it all the way back, he had a relatively normal life. He had a relatively, you know, normal experience yeah. at the house with his mom, with his sister, with the things around him, and fire took that away. Yeah. And yeah. his last mm -hmm. vestige of connection to the life he had, he's the one that has to set the fire yeah. for it to go. And then he's done. That's that's goes the yeah. No, that's the last connection. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely right. No, you you, you you nailed it. Um, and this is where, and then you know, the movie is ending here, um, because we get Sorry. them. No, you're fine. Um, um, because now they're back together again. Kind of. Um. Where, but he looks at us, you know, to remind us this is not just some random thing. Like you're connected to this, you're part of this. This is this is a real thing, and we get the final shot, which is what Okada had to point out to me in his video. I had never noticed this, that the final shot is present day. Yeah, he is. In 1988, he is going through this, and he's remembering what's going on. And then he's going through his life with Setsuko because what happened? He never buried her. He never buried his mother. He never gets buried. And so he has trapped them in a loop. They can never move on. They can never reincarnate. They are trapped there forever. Buddhist-wise, right? Um, yeah, and he just goes over this a billion times, over and over and over and over again, um, because of his choices, because of what he does. And again, being a 14-year-old boy, there's only so much you can expect of a, of a, of a kid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and that is what, <laughs> that is what Takahata leaves us with, um, um, and in the, in the, in the, I mean, and again, not subtle. Like back when, um, if you remember, I'm laughing because oh my gosh, you know, while they're showing this, they're playing "Home Sweet Home." Right. Yeah. And I was unsure if that was just you know if there were some other lyrics to that or something that was going on there. No. Right. Like, you go to the credits, and it's literally, like, it is home sweet home. That's the point he's making. Uh, um, it is rare to get a movie that is truly a tragedy. That doesn't turn into melodrama. That doesn't overstate its case. That kind of just presents this very simply and straightforwardly to you but layers all of these imagery, all this imagery on this, you know? Yeah. It's amazing. Um, the film is just all sorts of stuff going on. Um, and it is tragic and it is sad, um, but it's also, and again, it's, it's why he's, he's making this film because this is, you know, this is a thing that happened. This is based on a semi-autobiographical short story written by a guy where his younger sister died. 
as a result of this. This is kind of what he went through. Um, and he said, like, what he described having a sense of is what happened to his sister. Like, straight up carbon copy. Um, which is there are, yeah. <clears throat> there are pictures of actual photographs of the caves that wow. he refers to, that the mm -hmm. refers to, and that were are part of the storyboard. Um, <clears throat> if you buy, a, a, you know, I have it mm. here on, on, mm. on my DVD copy, but there are some, not all copies have this where they <clears throat> show you the pictures of, of the caves that they used. Mm -hmm. And it were literal caves. It wasn't the, the man-made thing that mm. that they lived in. It was an actual cave. Mm -hmm. And they took pictures of it then and, and you know, of, of not then back when they were using it. But, you know, it was probably like 40 or 50 years ago at this point, the black and white pictures. And they were used for the storyboards and then eventually, you know, were transformed to the, to, to the caves that we see now because mm -hmm. it's just kind of cleaner. Because, but they were just living in literal he suggests are these, right. these caves and where, where it happened mm -hmm. and it says you look at that and you just kind of go okay i've never read the by the way i never read the story um never mm -hmm. read the book uh, but you know you can only imagine you, you know where are you in your life that that's home mm -hmm. that becomes home where where are you where does the life lead you to get to that and when you, when you watch this for the, for, for the first time you're watching something that you're you don't get all the stuff that we're talking about on mm -hmm. the first watch yeah. on the first see through um as a matter of fact like when we talked about it before you guys went on the onset you know you right you brought up the the video of mm -hmm. talking about this and i'm like going okay i didn't know that yeah i didn't know this i didn't know that i didn't know the other thing and so you know you watch it with that new lens mm -hmm. and you just see more stuff yeah. and it's just yeah. in there and there's things that you, so when you watch this out in chat land if you haven't seen this or if you've only seen it once the reason why part of the reason why this movie is such a great movie is because you really do need to watch it again mm -hmm. it's going to be more you're going to realize more there's going to be more to it there's more background it's worth looking at it's mm -hmm. worth taking you know putting yourself out of the movie and then researching the movie itself mm -hmm. yeah but um and, so it's, go ahead. And again, to be clear, we're not we're not hating on anyone here. We're not right. saying that you know Seda or anyone realistically would have acted differently. These are all right. very realistic, normal behaviors, and they had terrible consequences. Right. Yep. It's kind of the the classic war thing, and, right? You know. And, and, and the most important thing to take away from this is that it's not just a true story of one person. This happened. Mm -hmm. Not just to him. Yeah. This is what happened. And that's part of what makes this so freaking sad and tragic mm -hmm. is that it's just not the one person. Mm -hmm. It's not one say that. It's not one sense ago. It's not one aunt. It, this, this is a thing that a generation remembers. Mm hmm Yeah, um, I can't think of a better way to end it than that. That is Grave of the Fireflies. Yes, it was. All right, Christmas. everyone, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in a little bit. We're going to grab some tissues, going to dry our eyes. We're going to recover a little bit, hopefully. Oh. <laughs> oh. Um, and we will get to some yeah. news and some other stuff, because we just spent two hours talking about Grave of the Fireflies, um, because it, it deserves it. Um, so I will see you back in a little bit.